Hello, welcome to this uh, video tutorial on Wall CX. Continuing on from the uh, Wall CX lecture uh, uh, tutorial series. Um, in the previous uh, tutorial, video tutorial, we looked into exporting phenotypes, and that was kind of the uh, combination of the Wall C uh, user interface. We looked through uh, the different tabs. We looked at the form. We looked at the primer, and so on. So. Um, what I'm going to look at uh, in this video tutorial is uh, the different output streams from the wall C component. So we know that uh, what the phenotype outputs and how we can extract that data. So let's look at now these other three output streams. So firstly is the wall C genome component. So under the wall C genome component, what it does is very similar to the wall C phenotype, which is saves uh, the genome associated with each solution. So right now, my solutions go from zero, generation zero to generation 99, and each generation has 19 uh, individuals within it. And these are the associated genomes for each and every one of those generations. So I will use the decode genome component, and what that does is that it allows me to extract the actual genome of each solution. So if I just visualize one of these, So these are the slider values or the genes that construct that solution, a solution zero, zero, generation zero, individual zero. And uh, these are for uh, specific users who want to take their evolution simulation forward. That through this method, you can reconstruct a solution or a set of solutions using these genes or to conduct further analysis on uh, the genomes to see whether there are specific genes that are repeated the most, whether there's any patterns to extract from here. This is all features that are going to be part of future versions of Wolsey. But for now, we thought we'd give this information to you uh, as a user and see how you can benefit from it um, for your work. The uh, 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 second output stream is the fitness values. I'm, I'll just delete this now just um, for clarity. So the fitness values, essentially, it outputs the fitness values for each solution in the population. And the way the tree is structured is that it gives you the generation, solution number, and the, and the different fitness values. So fitness value one, two, and three. So the benefit of always outputting the different uh, uh, solutions under this path here is that you can cross-reference between paths. So for my phenotypes, for example, I know that my phenotypes have this specific path, 99, 0, 99 to, 9, uh, 99 to 19. I can go back here and let's say if I went under wall C selection and let's say, um, I just created one of these here and I selected just so that they're not all in the last generation, for example. Let's maximize that. I'll add this guy. Actually, let me clear the generation. Add that guy. And if I click export, okay, it should take less than 10 seconds to export these 11 solutions. Export finished. So right now, the, the paths or these phenotypes that I exported are from all over the population. So from generation 29, 43, 52, 65, and so on and so forth. So if I wanted to extract the fitness values corresponding to these solutions here, this is actually relatively quickly. I can just go into tree statistics, which will give me the path number for each one of these solutions. And I can use this path number with tree branch, for example, and these fitness values. And so what this will give me is the fitness values corresponding to these phenotypes. So just to quickly visualize this, I can go to just expose tree. For example, let's type this. So for example, for solution 2911, this is the phenotype. These are the fitness values. And obviously I can do the exact same thing with the genome, get the genome for it. So I'll do that now quickly. So decode genome, again, only extracts 
and decode this branch. So this gives me the genome for that solution. Um, and so I can quickly cross-reference different, uh, the genomes, the fitness values, and phenotypes <coughs> to one another. Finally, the, the, the third and last one that we're going to talk about today is this data component. Now, if you remember, in the very first video I did was that I connected a data which was the total ground floor area. So I wanted to record the total ground floor area for each solution in the population. And this is saved for me for the entire population. <clears throat> so each solution's total ground floor area is saved from the first to the very end in the population. <clears throat> I can also, uh, of course, extract the corresponding data um, according to the uh, phenotypes that I exported. But I could have also done that by um, inputting this data, the ground floor here. So <clears throat> this is also just to kind of further emphasize the, this feature of this construct phenotype is that I can always modify my inputs here and reconstruct the solution. So rather than having to go through this data here, if I inserted this total ground floor area in this list here, and let's say if I even flattened this list, so uh, not all the B reps, the meshes, and the numbers are in different branches. So I just completely flattened them. And if I went back to my user interface and I exported these solutions again, Again, 10 solutions will take about less than 10 seconds. Of course, it's the, the export times according to the complexity of the design problem. Please keep that in mind. So what this gives me now, the different geometries, the different meshes, and the numbers. So if I go into my data here, So these are the B reps or surfaces. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have the meshes automatically in a different stream. And also I have the numbers, which are these numbers here, the total ground floor area. Now, obviously, this is not for the entire population, this is only for the solutions I exported. So where data gives you these, the, 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 uh, the data for the entire population, you can also feed the same thing to the phenotype, but it only exports them for, that speci for those specific solutions that you selected to export. So that ends this uh, uh, tutorial. Through, through this video, we th went through uh, the outputs of Wolsey and um, uh, we saw how we can export data, reintroduce a different phenotype input and re-export without having to rerun the simulation, and, um, uh, and how we can cross-reference different data streams using the tree statistics or the path number of each solution. In the next uh, video, I'll show just a very quick uh, um, visualization of how through this method, these solutions can be distributed on a grid and how you can use the different uh, data from here to visualize a solution in your viewport. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.